anything happen in the agency this week? Anything happen? Uh, yeah. So nothing happened in the sense. Well, I mean, yeah, there's, there's, there's interesting stuff happening right now. What I'm kind of seeing in the landscape is, um, I spoke the last time I spoke with Rob Bailey, um, with, and Kristen, Rob had said the majority of the, and I might've said this last week too, I'll just repeat myself. Cause I think there were some more ahas for me. Uh, the majority of the, um, six, seven, eight figure high level agency income earners, Mm -hmm. um, are running with a system and a SaaS type of a play to where they're not doing so much high ticket on the front end, but then it's more of like, say, a um, an offer stack that basically allows them to charge more monthly. So this is my point, right? So mm -hmm. um, as I'm going through like um, the high level agency training with Cooch right now, there's nothing I haven't heard before, but then I'm I'm different, right? Yeah. yeah. So the, right. So the three different things that he talks about is like, in the SaaS world, right, there's uh, three different, or in the agency world, there's three different places where you could be. You could be the tools provider, you could be the systems provider, or the agency provider. Mm -hmm. So in context, when you're thinking about that. Um, done with you, done for you. Well, it, yes, it's it's some it's a little bit of the difference in this in the context of the way, like it's the scalability of it as well, right? So, right, like, it is kind of like the do it yourself done with you done for you type of a play. Um, mm -hmm. But the aha that I got was last time I talked to Rob and when I was doing SWAS before these new Twilio um, requirements, carrier SMS mo mobile carrier restrictions were starting to come down the pipe. You didn't have like any friction to be able to start and launch an SMS campaign and put money in, in your client's pocket quickly. So mm -hmm. that turned your, um, you could actually do somewhat of a high ticket front end and then drop the SaaS. But the challenge was I was never able to do that. This is what I mean, right? If I'm turning $2,500 a month for the first three months, and then I drop it to $500 a month, and then I'm kind of letting, letting go of the reins, if you will, then where, like the, the perception of the transition, I, I, I didn't have a smooth transition to that. Meaning for the first three months where I was providing results, for these clients, it was literally a white glove experience to where they never even logged into their high level. Their high level, they knew they had one, but they mm -hmm. also knew that the only thing that they cared about was appointments that my team was booking on the calendar for them. So that's what that's what they that's what they were trained for. They were they were trained for results or uh, being results oriented, right? Yeah. So the problem was once it was kind of like, hey, we don't need you doing this anymore, right? Um, they didn't have the education to actually pull it off themselves. They don't have the conversation. They, they don't have that. Um, but it's like you go from, you know, so then, yeah, you, you hand them off and say, okay, here, here it is. But it's like, well, why am I even going to pay you $500 a month? It doesn't make any sense. Right. Mm -hmm. Because they were never bought into the system in terms of what it could do. They still had their set on, set on the website. They weren't doing anything with inbound anyways. So it was kind of like they were never trained on like, say the new way versus the old way. It was like done for you agency style business. And then it, I, we never trickled off. So then I was like, I understood the concept of like, hey, get your SWAS hooks in first. So then after the three months, you can basically go down to like, it was three pay up front and then go down to a monthly uh, service agreement, right? But what mm -hmm. I'm seeing, and then Rob echoed it was um, out the gate, it should be more of like, say a, for example, right? 497 a month, 697 a month or $1,000 a month. But then that's the system that they're buying into. And that, that a la Mike Cooch is more like, they're buying in to have access to use your system. So it's not like you're doing any custom work for them. They're not, they're not licensing anything, but so long as they're paying, they have access to use the system for their business. Right. Mm -hmm. And my whole point saying this is I was like, how do I get from where I was when I was working your system, Rob, to how people are doing it now? Cause I wasn't understanding the pricing structuring. Right. Mm -hmm. So then now what I'm, I'm, I'm seeing is people instead of, so what we're basically going against is the people that are just selling high level as a SaaS. Here it is, $97 a month, do whatever you want with it, right? And you'll get all this other shit. Um, instead of that, we're selling a system, right, that is built on top of high level, that utilizes high level and, and everything. But then we're building campaigns, assets, templates, and everything in it for them to be able to utilize. And that's what we're charging a higher fee for, right? Mm -hmm. And the reason why I even, I'm even saying all that is because I was like, how do I get a higher recurring one? How do I get consistent recurring revenue? And higher than just basically doing like an affiliate playoff of high level. And I think that's where we're trending to. Mm. Does that make sense? I don't know. It's kind of like I was kind of random. Yeah, 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 yeah. with you. No, no, no. A hundred percent. Because basically I, I've had the same struggle too, where it's just like, um, yeah. How do you build it out to where it is the actual system? How do you make it where 
it's sticky enough for to get people to come back how do you make it where it's standalone though where it's like it's still on there it's up to them to use it and like it's literally just making it software right just like the same way you would get a 300 dollar thing to be able to use the system have access to everything yeah and i think what mark mike talks about and i'll start i started listening to his, to, to the training from the start yesterday um and actually go through it in sequence right um is the differentiation is really what's going to make it stand apart stand 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 out from the crowd right what is it so, that you have in it yeah what else will we adding in it so then right now i know that and i don't also want to be the type um that um i don't want to be uh the type that is uh dialed into a niche because i don't know what the hell that niche is yet in a in a relevant point i was talking to glenn who's my partner on a lot of projects uh -huh. uh, basically when i was explaining the the thing of like you know they say you know the riches are in the niches bitches yeah uh, like that kind of stuff and i was like i don't know why it's always been so hard for me to do it and then he just basically broke it down I was like yo you as your personality wanting to help everybody wanting to help a broader spectrum of people you're not going to be able to do it you're never going to niche down the same way that he can't where it's just like but getting towards that point of like you're niched into an actual product or an actual service you know, it was kind of his point, like where I've tried it a bunch of times, right? And it never really felt right. And yeah, I was maybe in my head would say like, I'm just not focusing enough or I'm not, I'm not hammering it through. I'm not doing this. But at the same time, like, man, I've, I've definitely been focused, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like seven days a week, 10, 10 hours a day minimum, you know, just, just making that right. Yeah. Um. um so what is your take on that? So like, tell me more about that. Like, where you have you arrived to now since you're talking to Glenn about that and what's your experience right now? You know, you can offer a service. You can offer a bunch of different components of it. But, to, you know, to do the I only deal with cash dentists in Alabama. Mm -hmm. like, that's too niche for me. And it's the way of thinking, right? right? Right. Some people are very good at, like, narrowing in on one problem figuring out how to solve that one problem and then making extra assets on that one problem to make, you know, just super dialed in. Mm -hmm. But what excites me is the new problems, right? Like what excites me is, yeah, we could do it this way, but we can also do it that way. And then mm -hmm. this, way. and they're all things that have benefits. They're all everything. And yeah, it, for example, it's a, it's harder for me to get a team to be able to do something repetitively and nail it you know, because it's not one playbook, it's kind of five, it's it's teaching concepts instead of point and click. Yeah. Right. But at the same time, like, there's a certain part, I like that, you know what I mean? Like, I, I do enjoy coming up with new things. Like, like, I don't like to be an ideas guy, because an ideas guy lacks the execution, right. But at the same time, an ideas, you know, like, I like the, I, I, you know, I got a lot of good ideas. You know oh, no, no, that's that's, that's a great, great. You bring up some great points because, like, that's how I've been thinking about it as well. It's like what when I had that conversation with Rob, I was like, I keep, like, I sound like a broken record to you because I keep talking about how things were going great in the mortgage space until the market shifted, right? And mm -hmm. he goes, No, I understand. And for me, right, the aha from that was like, remove yourself from being that industry specific. You can be specific in the context of like, okay, what types of businesses are this? Your niche could be a type of business that takes different types of appointment, like for example, phone appointments, right? Or in-person appointments that has a database that is somewhat high ticket. So I was like, oh, interesting. So if that's the case, then I can talk to him in that standpoint. But in my, in, but to your point too, I'm an ideas person and I'm terrible at being the finisher. And I also know that it's an actual thing, right? You're either the visionary or you're the, the, um, what, the, what oh, the, in, the integrator, right? right? So I understand that part as well. And now I'm like, okay, and I also know that from two multi seven figure business owners, they were like, your business should be boring. Making money should be boring. And since I am not in that, say, seven or multi seven figure business type of earning space yet, I am going to let them speak on from experience, right? I'm like, okay. But at the same time, to what you're, to your point, what I'm seeing that may be able to fit this, right? In the sense of like, I know we need to be disciplined in the bucket that we're playing in. But, but what I'm seeing that may be able to facilitate both of those in terms of being systems oriented and disciplined on that type of like, say, quote unquote niche, as we we're talking about, and also being creative and allowing ourselves to solve problems is the two spaces of 
is it a system and a, and, and a service that we're selling, right? We'll, we'll call it that whole SWAS play with high level and, and, and what we're building there. Or is it something that could be course related to where people are buying the information because it's a problem that we want to solve and it excites us and we're solving that and to where we're adding value to the marketplace and people can utilize that. And I looked at that as two different avenues to where we can still be creative, but then, but then be disciplined to where we're getting the monetization. Because what is the... Um, I guess what's the like uh, uh, expectation of what a course is supposed to do for you, as opposed to in addition to um, like on the 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 SWAS side of the business. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. 